Hi, welcome to part five of a battery state of charge um, for wireless networks. Um, in in the previous uh, YouTube videos that I shot, um, it's basically showing how to reverse engineer a, a Gentech um, 1300 battery monitor, um, replace the uh, radios in them and get it so you could be able to connect it up to a, a Arduino or, or a uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, I've had a lot of folks ask if that was all that work was really necessary to go through and have it replace the radios, um, take out the Chinese clones and put in authentic uh, radios into the module and um, asking about if it's possible to, um, you know, tap and connect up to the USB interface between the, the base shunt and the control module. I did some looking into it, and it appeared that that um, USB uh, uh, port, USB display that plugs into the base unit is not USB at all. Um, it is four-wire interface, and it does use USB mini uh, cable. Um, but it appears that it's at ground five volts, just like any other USB would. But this, the other two lines are not D plus and D minus. They're in fact uh, differential serial signal or RS four eighty five. Um, so, uh, given that, I, I looked at that on the logic analyzer and basically determined it's basically the it is the same data stream that comes across the radios between between the module and the in the uh, display unit so um and went in further and looked at it and figured the baud rate out it's it's uh um 567 baud i think it is i'll touch back on that later and and um so it's pretty simple just to tap into that uh with uh uh, RS-45 um, uh, dongle and be able to hook that directly into a uh, um, Raspberry Pi in the case of what I did. But anyway, let me just do a, do a quick update. Um, I've actually got things hooked up. Previous uh, videos I shot um, were showing just basically a uh, bench setup. This is actually on my boat um, as I am right now, and this is looking at the past seven days worth of data. So this is the battery state of charge. Currently, it's a nice sunny day today at 100% charge. You basically see each day um, we we'll go for 100% charge down to about 90 or, or 80, high 80s. Um, there was a couple days uh, ago we had uh, a couple cloudy days. Um, it was a very stormy day where um, the battery the state of charge dropped way off to about 75 percent but then a nice sunny day yesterday and then another site sunny day today and then you can basically look at the uh, current um, all these fine spikes are basically the uh, the boat's refrigerator kicking on and off um, it draws about six six plus amps battery voltage um, so these are all things that come out of that uh, gentech um, that that Gentech battery monitor. I also have it tapped into a um, solar controller, the EP Ever solar controller, and this is all the data that's that's coming off the EP solar controller. So you can see the 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 load current, um, the solar solar panel power. Um, I've got a 300 watt panel, a 300 watt panel on here, so I'm getting close to that on a nice sunny day. Um, but anyway. Uh, panel voltage and then the uh, temperatures. This is the temperature from the EP Ever, and then this one is the temperature from the um, the Gentech controller. So to hook this whole thing up, um, this actually simplifies things a fair amount. Um, I'll put the notes down below how to wire it up, but you basically tap into the between the shunt and the display, so it, it allows you to keep the display in the circuit. And then I, I cooked up this uh, node red um, setup here, and I'll go into some details here. In in part four, I showed how to take the data that was coming from the uh, the base shunt um, to a uh, Arduino, and then from the Arduino via Wi-Fi to a Raspberry Pi. 
and um, grabbing grabbing the TCP data that came across. Um, this is basically the same idea, except there's no Arduino in this solution. We basically have the RS-485 dongle connected directly to Raspberry Pi. Um, so that's what this, this does is the um, module here will grab uh, connect, connect, physically connect in the data at uh, 57, 600 baud. That's coming across that RS-485 cable. Um, and then basically the, this basically replaces all that Arduino code, um, that I have up on GitHub. And I'll place this whole thing up on, uh, this whole flow or, um, node red flow up on uh, GitHub as well. So you can simply download it and uh, load it yourself, modify it as need be. But this basically grabs the uh, raw data that comes across that stream and formats it, uh, plucks out all of the, the, the wadi jamp hours, watt hours, um, so on and so forth, and formats those into floating point numbers. And important to note that I've got hard coded in here my battery amp hours up here, uh, 400 amp hours. Um, I don't grab that data coming across. I, I only look at the, uh, the real time streams that, that come across on a, on a continuous basis. Um, and then um, I, I have this trigger in here to just grab data every one minute. Um, the the um, I don't know how many times a second the base unit um, grabs data, but it's several times a second. And um, rather than rather than log all that stuff into um, the database, I'm just grabbing uh, a minute every minute. I, I I filter out the data, and then. Um, this basically formats the data uh, much the same way as is in part four that I showed how to format the data to get it into the right format for the influx database. And then um, the, um, and then basically this HTTP request um, shoves the data into the influx database. So um, that's all covered in part four um, how to set up the database in the more detail on how to set up this node red, um, setup. Um, but, um, so if you can go back and look at part three, you should get the idea. So anyway, um, thought, um, this whole thing would be of, of interest to see some actual data going on and, um, see how, how things, things have gone. So, um, thank you very much. Bye-bye.